you know, I was watching Wither Wuthering Heights last night, and I just broke down and cried at the end of the movie. I said, Jesus, you have given me the storyline for my next book. You know, I've had a bit of writer's block with um, The Forbidden Abyss Part 2 because I just, to be honest with you, I really don't, there's many aspects of Zack Knight that I do not like, and so I can't really get into him as the point of view character. And yet, he's such an important character in the story that I need to tell. So finally, the Lord showed me how to do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. And the, I just cried for 10 minutes after um, Wuthering Heights when the Lord showed this to me. The general plot for the Forbidden Abyss Part 2 is going to be patterned after Wuthering Heights and the Thornbirds. There is a 1939 movie of Wuthering Heights with Laurence Olivier, which has been much of my inspiration for my for the next book I'll be writing. Zack Knight is going to be patterned after Catherine Earnshaw of Wuthering Heights and the priest Ralph de Bricassar from the Thornbirds. Rule 13 will be patterned after Heathcliff from Wuthering Heights and Maggie from the Thornbirds. I will be patterned after myself. Brent Spiner will be patterned after the real Brent Spiner. Jesus Christ has been one of the characters I've really been hung up on. He's going to be patterned after Isabella Linton from Wuthering Heights. She was the virtuous woman whose love is spurned by Heathcliff, and Heathcliff only married Isabella to get Catherine's attention to further <clears throat> to promote his love for Catherine. You know, I can't make Jesus Christ the narrator because I'm human and I could never fully grasp the mind of God. I don't think any human can make Jesus Christ a narrator of any book and do him justice. Rather, I will let the narrators describe him and his reactions to events, and I'm going to use a show-don't-tell method to reveal Jesus Christ to my reader in this book. And since King David is a man after God's own heart, he's going to be telling most of the story. So I feel he's the best narrator to reveal Jesus to the world in this story, which is going to be a fantasy Christian novel, um, but I am going to title it The Forbidden Abyss Part 2. I'm going to make it first person like Wuthering Heights, and I'm, the first person narrator will be patterned after the first person narrator of Wuthering Heights, someone who's involved with all the main characters but is somewhat neutral and someone who comes in towards the end of the stories of all the main characters, and he starts off in a business relationship with the characters that becomes a bit more personal as he learns more about the people whose lives he interacts with. So the storyteller narrator is going to be patterned after this Wuthering Heights narrator. I'm going to make him a screenwriter who wants to tell Gail's story, and in so doing gets so caught up in the drama that he ends up being the main narrator for the story. And I'm going to pattern him after Thomas McGovern, who is the screenwriter and producer of The Church of Gale, which is going to be a documentary movie, hopefully. <laughs> Giving this new narrator a neutrality, but yet he'll be different from the evil main characters. Somebody whose company and opinions the readers will enjoy reading. If I made the narrator Zack Knight or Rule 13 like I originally planned, their vulgarity and viewpoint would turn off a lot of readers. They wouldn't want to read the story. King David is pat will be patterned after himself and the narrator housekeeper of Wuthering Heights. King David's going to be a fascinating narrator because so much of his life parallels the lives of the main characters in my book. And to show this is going to be a fascinating read. Satan, who's also a character in this story, he's going to be patterned somewhat after Edgar Linton, the respected, worldly, and prestigious lover who married Catherine over Heathcliff. Actually, Satan and his followers have more respectability and prestige in our present world than the true Jesus followers, as can be evidenced when you read the comments beneath my videos. I can use Satan to highlight the theme of the book, which is that not all true lovers can get married. And social and economic status differences and inequality of rank can prevent a marriage between those who are truly in love. 
Satan and his followers will represent those who are respected and admired in this present world due to their social status. Status People like Lori McBride, Camilla Alves, Brent Spiner, Matthew McConaughey, and Zack Knight when he marries Satan and becomes the Antichrist. I would call them the in-group or those who have a reputation that is good and respected, even if it's not deserved. When someone from the out group, that's those who do not have a good reputation, such as myself, Judge Terrence Jenkins, who has to battle racism, Rule 13, etc., tries to marry one in the in group, in group, Satan and his respected worldly minions, who have the respect and honor of the world, oppose the marriage so that those who have true love for each other and it may end up marrying another that they don't love in order to fulfill their duties to their in-group. Uh, choosing worldly prestige and the safety of conventions over their hearts. Betraying their hearts to be true to conventions and respectability is the theme of this book. In other words, the theme is obstacles to true love and the tragic consequences when those with hearts of true love reject their heart and choose worldly fame and prestige over their hearts. This results in barren relationships and marriages that break the hearts leading to emotional death culminating in physical death. So first and foremost this is a character story in which the main character characters, Jesus, myself, Zack Knight, and Rule 13, are unhappy with their roles in life and yearn for a different role. The story question will be, will these characters find happiness? And with the characters, the question will not be fully answered, but just fully explored throughout the novel. Secondly, this is an event story, and a, a character story is about a character who's not satisfied with their role in life and is seeking for a new role or learns to be content with the role they have. A, an event story is a story about a disorder in the world that needs to be corrected. So it's first and foremost a character story, which is what Jesus recommended that I do. It's secondly an event story in which the main characters are all victims of the disorder of Satan's temporary reign over the earth. He's prince of the power of the air. So this story will examine this disorder and show its results and its causes. You know, so um, I've been just, I've had a bit of writer's block because I don't feel worthy to make Jesus Christ the narrator. So I, I'm going to work around that. And yet I feel I must make him the main, a main character in this story. And the way I'm going to work around that is I'm going to have the narrator be a screenwriter character who wants to write my story and then he ends up telling the story through his viewpoint. Uh, you know, an interesting thing happened when I was conversing with Jesus a couple weeks ago. I asked Jesus this question. I said, Jesus, how do you, how do you feel about the fact that most of the human race is, go is going to reject you and go to hell and that you're going to have to condemn most of the human race to hell? Can you tell me how you feel about this? And Jesus said, oh, I hate to answer this question. He says, whenever somebody tries to understand my nature, so he started whispering to Brent Spiner to try to tell Brent how he felt about this. And all of a sudden, Brent started hallucinating. He started saying all these weird things like orgasm, platy platypus, and he was, he was going, I, and me and Tarant were saying, what's happening to Brent? And then Brent fell down on his side and started vomiting. And, and Jesus said, I hate it whenever I try to share my true nature with somebody. This always happens. He said, there was once a gorilla that wanted to know what I was like. And he says, I can handle it, Jesus, tell me. So Jesus started talking to the gorilla and trying to get the gorilla to understand his nature. And as he was, as he was sharing his emotions and his, and his nature with the gorilla, the gorilla's brain exploded and the gorilla died. So Jesus said, this is why I hate trying to let people know what I'm like, because the human uh, body or the or animals cannot stand, uh, the, uh, ca they can't take it. They, they, when I try to let them know or feel how I feel and think as a deity, they, they just can't handle it. He said, so I hate doing this. And then, and then I, me and Terrence said, Jesus, is Brent going to be all right? He says, oh, he's going to have a bad headache tomorrow, but he'll be all right. So 
And then that was it. After you know, I thought about that. I thought, man, if my Brent, who's so awesome and is such a big and vast person, can't understand Jesus, who am I? I said, well, Jesus, how do I answer this question? I said, maybe I should pose it more as a question than an answer in my book when I explore your character. And Jesus said, yes, Gail, I think that might be the way to do it. He says, no human can truly understand me. He said, so that's basically what I'm going to be doing in this book. I will be, I understand him better than most because of my King David, you know, genetic profile. You know, be, he was a man after God's own heart. What I'm going to be doing is exploring Jesus's character and using a show don't tell method in this book. Um, Jesus said it's okay for me to make him a main character and to try to reveal him to the world. So that's the book I have. Uh, like I said, when I watched uh, Wuthering Heights, I cried. I thought, this is it. This is the way I need to approach the book. It's going to be like a Wuthering Heights style and tone. It's going to be fiction. It's going to be a novel. But even though it's fiction, the emotional battles that the characters deal with in the book will be very much like what's really going to happen in real life. And it's like Jesus said, he said, Gail, I want you to write your next book like a novel. He said, you know, the way you wrote The Forbidden Abyss Part 1, it tells truth like in a news journalist form. It's factual and it's truthful in that respect. But when an artist goes in and puts their personal brushes on a painting and they highlight certain parts of the painting in order to bring across the emotions that are true and, and the emotional truths of a story, he said, that is best done with a novel. And he said, maybe your literal facts will not be quite right. He said, but the emotional truths that you portray in the novel may end up being more truthful than if you tried to tell it as a complete true story. So that's what I'll be doing in my next book. And I'm excited about this book. And I predict it's going to even make Zack Knight cry. Yep, I think I'm going to pull that off. <laughs>